Alright, did I give an example for this one yet? And the answer is like this. Oops, start here. Alright. We're talking about anodes. I look like I'm a little off my game. I am. I ate too much at the Seder last night. They always eat too much at the Seder. If you know what a Seder is, try Google. Alright. talking about amides. And amides have the following structure. And remember, an amide R prime and R double prime can be hydrogen. And amides, you wonder what good are they? Well, your skin is amides, your hair is amides, and all proteins are amino acids held together with an amide bond. Therefore, one of the more important reactions I will teach you as semester is the following. If you take an amide and react it with acid and water, acid hydrolysis of an amide, what happens? You break it back down to the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide, but you also get not the amine, but the amine salt of the amine. And you would have used. Why the amine salt? Because in the presence of acid, have an amine, it's a base, fastest reaction in all of chemistry, all of nature, is an acid-base reaction. There's nothing faster. It's called diffusion control because two, as soon as the two molecules touch, they react quicker than I can snap my finger. So therefore, you don't get the amine, you get the amine salt. Now, the question is, why is this one of the most important reactions I can teach you? Well, in this room, where can I find some HCl real quick? Your stomach, or my stomach. What also is in there? Water. And this is the way your body starts breaking down proteins to get the amino acids we need, now I'm well beyond my level of expertise in biology and medical science, to help build things in our body. And therefore, this is an important reaction. I don't know if I told you, but I was a student I was taking notes if something was important, I'd go like this, it was really important, I'd do this, and if it was super important, I'd do this, and I'd also do this. So I know this is an important reaction. And there's a couple I'll teach you, and let's go through one of these. Later in the semester, I'll show you specifically Like here, this plus HCl in water, or I can write it this way, both in the same way, this molecule reacting with this and this. And the question is, what's this and this, which is a fancier way of saying, what functional group am I dealing with? What's different? Carbonyl, carbon double bond to oxygen, nitrogen with carbons on it. This is an amine. Remember, R and R prime can be hydrogen. In this case, they're not. I'll call this R. I'll call this R prime, this R double prime. With these two, it doesn't matter what you call R prime and R double prime. The reactor with HCl in water, acid hydrolysis and amide. You get back the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide. Plus, you get the amine salt, not the amine. It was in the presence of acid. You cannot isolated in the mean. If you put the amine here instead of the amine salt, I'll mark it wrong because it can happen. All right, let's take a look at what's the first thing. This carboxylic acid, what's R? Methyl. Next one, I get the amine salt. 
what's r prime. I have it as ethyl. What's r double prime methyl? You can reverse these. Two sides can have the alpha groups and the other the hydrogen. And you could also write this this way. And either one would be the proper way of doing it. And it's, oh, we got the other eraser back. this one for your fun and enjoyment. I mean, it's sort of cloudy, but at least it's not snowing or ice out there today. Everybody in front of you 
as witness, I said that. And if you had anything with protein in it the last how many hours, that reaction was going on in your stomach. See what I mean? Organic chemistry is everywhere. Now you're learning that. So happy as I look around the room, everybody working on their organic chemical reactions and able to do it. Doesn't that feel good? Hi. Oop, I see people still working on it. All right, let's go ahead and do this. I think they have, you know, almost everybody. I'll give you 8.76 seconds more. different here. Carbonyl, nitrogen, carbons on there, carbons here, amine. What am I reacting with amide with? HCl, acid, water. You can use other acids like sulf uh, sulfuric, but I'm going to stick to HCl because that's what's in your stomach and that's what you're probably going to most important to you people. And if you react an amide with HCl and water, acid hydrolysis of an amide, you get back to the carboxylic acid plus the amine, you no, know, you get the amine salt of the amine you would have used to make that. In this case, if we have our amide, this is R, this is one of these I'll call our prime the other one, our double prime, doesn't matter which. And now I'll start with the carboxylic acid. What's my R group? Two carbons. And I'll get propanoic acid. And next, what's my amine salt? One R group is a benzene ring. It doesn't matter which side you put it on. The other one is an enprobal. And it's an amine salt with an amide. And that's how you do that. And now, let's really have fun with this. And the best part of organic chemistry is synthesis. It turns out, since there are a lot of proteins available, Mother Nature provides us ways of making amino acids both in our body and in the lab to make things or in a chemical plant that you would buy. How many of you have ever heard of, when you look on the 
label and it says hydrolyzed protein and things like that. And that's what they make things with. But let's do something similar. one, what would you wrap, what would be the starting material that you would use to make these compounds by reacting something with HCl and water? Take a look at this. Question is, what are we making? And what I mean by what are we making? What functional groups are involved in the products? What's well, different? Carbonyl hydroxide from carbon, carboxylic acid, Ooh. nitrogen. That's different. It's got two methyl groups, two hydrogens, and a halogen anion chloride. In this case, R prime and R double prime are the same. And what do you start with when you react something with HCl and water to make that? You start with an amide. And now the question is, what amide? Well, if I look at this, I'm going to say what's on the carbonyl is my R group. What's on my nitrogen, in this case two methyls, are R and R prime. And therefore, if I construct this carbonyl, nitrogen, what's R, methyl group, and what's R prime and R double prime, methyls, you can write it this way or also would be perfectly correct. Notice you have two methyl groups on nitrogen. And in my test, I might write it this way if I were starting material, same thing with the ACS. So you should be used to either way as a representation. And you can do it either way. And that's how you do a synthesis of amides. And we'll learn later on Mother Nature uses synthesis of amides and amine salts and amines to do many things in your body. All right, if you can hydrolyze an amide with acid, you can hydrolyze it with base. Yes? Um, going back to that problem, okay, so the CH3 is going to be attached to the nitrogen for both of them. Um, is that the CH3 plus CH2? No. Or what this means R? is anything in a bracket, you look at the subscript to the right, that means you have that many of them what's to the left or right. But so this about, means yeah. what? Yeah, that one is what I'm This about. means this nitrogen has a methyl there and a methyl. They're separate. And this tells you it's the same thing. This nitrogen has two methyl groups that are separate. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And 
as I was saying, you can take an amet instead of acid catalyst. As a catalyst is something that makes the reaction go quicker, and acids and bases both catalyze this. You can use base. I'll use sodium hydroxide, it's the most common base around. And what you get is not the carboxylic acid that you would have used to make that amine, but the carboxylate anion of the amine of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amine. And you also get the amine you would have used to make that amine. Now, why do you get the carboxylate anion, not the carboxylic acid? And the reason you already know is carboxylic acids in the presence of base, as soon as this is formed from this reaction, this happens. And this is an acid-base reaction, and as you know, there's nothing quicker, and therefore you can never isolate the carboxylic acid from this reaction because you're in the presence of base. And therefore, this is the correct answer. And if you put down the carboxylic acid instead of the carboxylate anion, I will mark it wrong because it can't happen. And if you look at the following reaction, question is, what is the product of products? And if we look at this, we say, what functional group are we dealing with? What's different? Carbon with the oxygen, carbonyl, same carbon, nitrogen. It's an amide. It's got carbons on the nitrogen, carbonyl, carbon also. Sodium hydroxide and water, you'll get back the carboxylate anion of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide, and the amine you would have used to make that amide. Now, if we come back here, this is R. One of these on nitrogen, I'll call this R prime. This I'll call R double prime. Doesn't matter which you call which, on the nitrogen. And therefore, my R is two carbons, carboxylate anion or salt, and then my amine would be that, and that's how you do it. Now, one of the questions you should be asking all the time is, why am I learning this stuff? What good would this reaction be for me, personally? Well, how many of you have ever been in a home or apartment where the bathroom tub or sink gets clogged up. I'm sure most of you have seen that happen. Uh, and what clogs it up in the bathroom? Mainly hair. And what is hair? A polyamide. It's an amide. So if I want to break up the hair that's clogging my sink or bathtub, what do you use? You can use either a drain cleaner that has acid or a drain cleaner that has base. Now, I think I might have mentioned it, but I have, oh, I've got time. I don't know why they make Yahoo default search engine on the school computers, but they do. By the way, I don't get kickbacks. I'd like to, but I don't get anything back from Home Depot. That'd be nice. And now a commercial from Home Depot and Dr. Wake gets some money. told you a story about this? Did I tell you a story about it? All right. Maybe I haven't told you about it. Many years ago, I had bought the home I'm living in, and I was there for a month or so, and all of a sudden my kitchen sink clogged up. 
And I'm sure the previous owner had put a lot of grease down there, like from cooking bacon and stuff like that. So I had the rotor rooter guy out of here, new home, I have him out. Came out, cleared it out. Within a week, it's clogged again. And they had a guarantee, now you get a guarantee, call them, hey, it's clogged, come out again. And within a couple of days, again, it's clogged. This same guy comes out, he apologized, and he brings this bottle out, and I say, can I see that? And he put some in, and then uh, routed it out. And I looked at it, it was totally worthless garbage, which if you're an organic chemist like I am, it was some sort of enzyme stuff. Enzymes is a fancy word for weak acids. And it didn't do the job because it clogged up again. And I figured I'm wasting more time waiting for this guy to show up than the money I spent to have it originally cleaned out. So I went to the local Home Depot by my house and went to the area. They got a wall of drain cleaners. And one of the uh, gentlemen who worked there, and there were women who worked there too, were quite knowledgeable, came up to me, can I help you, sir? And I said, sure. Which one of these does a plumber's buy? And immediately he pointed to that stuff. And that stuff was the only stuff that was in a plastic bag. The other rest of them were just the bottles. And on the plastic bag, it's bright letters, must wear proper eye protection or wear safety goggles, one of those two. Back then when I bought it, you didn't have to. A student has told me since you have to sign a release to buy it, and it's worth it. And so I took it home, followed the directions, and cleaned it out. About 12 years later, it clocked up just a little bit, and I keep a bottle of this in the house, used it, cleaned it. My brother and sister called me and said, I was on the lawn, I need to talk to you. There he needs to talk to you. What's wrong with it? Well, our upstairs sink and bathtub is all clocked up. What was that stuff you told me about? And I told him, I said, we have proper eye protection. He's got goggles. And so we're a long sleeve top to that squid protection, which I did. And sure enough, cleaned it out. Last semester, a former student of mine, not from last semester, emailed me and said, what was that stuff you talked about? And I told her, she went to Home Depot, got some, yeah, stopped by class last semester at the end of class, and said, that stuff really worked. What is this? This is base. It's a mixture of potassium and sodium hydroxide. All the other drain cleaners are acid, HCL. And what does happen in terms of student who had hair obviously in the bathtub was hair is an amide. You react it with that. It breaks this down. And it's the smaller molecules breaks up and goes right down the drain. Now, interesting part of that story, the person, the gentleman at Home Depot who showed me that, I picked up the bottle, read the label, and said sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. And I said, oh, it's got base in it. He said, no, that's got acid in it. And I said, no, I got a PhD in synthetic organic chemistry, and that's a base. He said, no, that's an acid. And I realized once at that point, it was totally useless to argue chemistry with someone at Home Depot, even if you have a PhD in chemistry. I was right, but he helped me. This is a great product. I keep a bottle always in my house for emergencies. Once in a while, things just you know, build up, but it's been years since I've used it, and it lasts forever because it's inorganic and won't do anything. So now you know how to clean. And it works also the same principle in the kitchen. Esters can be acid or base hydrolyzed. See all the practical good stuff you learned from organic chemistry? Especially if you ever argue chemistry with someone known to be well, it's always fun. But they do know their stuff. Why don't you try this one? What would be the product or products for the following reaction? Boy, time flies when you're talking about home people.
to the signing sheet make it around? Who saw it last? Anybody see the signing sheet? Ah, keep it going. This is an amide. I'm reacting with sodium hydroxide and water. Base hydrolysis of an amide. What do you get back? You get back the carboxylate anion, not the carboxylic acid, but the carboxylate anion, the carboxylic acid I would have used to make that amide. Plus, you get back the amine that you would have used to make that amine. And now if we look at this, what's our methyl group? What's our prime cyclohexane ring? What's our double prime isopropyl group? And I'm just doing the chemistry instructor's favorite trick on a test, inoculating against, ooh, look at that big steering molecule. No, you know how to look at it and just think of this as this. Now, what's our one carbon? So I have sodium acetate. What's our prime cyclohexane ring? It's got a nitrogen. The amine. The other, our prime is methyl. And you can have the methyl and the cyclohexane and the hydrogen switch, so as long as one is on one side, one is on the other, and the third is on the third, and here's the products you get. starting material for the following reaction. Uh, hopefully maybe today I'll get it, but uh, probably tomorrow for sure, by Thursday I hope, but hopefully sometime today I will post the points breakdown for test number three, which I believe is a week from this uh, Thursday. Question? Um, I have shouldn't the methyl group be a nice what? Shouldn't the methyl be a you're right. Okay. I'm so embarrassed. Thank you. I guess I had methyl on the brain. Well, there goes my perfect score. I keep an eye on me today. I'm making mistakes. <coughs>
I'm going to let one of you take over. Excuse my slides. about each one or what functional group are we dealing with? Carboxylate anion. <coughs> then here, ooh, an amine. And notice this has R prime and R double prime are both methyl. R is my benzene ring. What do we react with sodium hydroxide and water to get those two molecules? And the answer is an amide. And now if I construct it, what's R? Benzene ring. I have my carbonyl. I have my nitrogen. What's in my nitrogen? Two methyl groups. I can write it this way, or more likely you'll see on my test on the ACS it written this way if it were a starting material. And that's how you do that. And now you know how to do synthesis with amide. I have everybody's attention. I have a very important announcement to make now. As of now, I will be going through no new general reactions this semester. Are there other general reactions? Yes, there are lots of them. I think I know about 300 of them at least. And I've only gone through about 50 for this semester, which is what you need to know to understand basic organic chemistry. What we will be doing the rest of the semester now, which is really fun, we're going to go out into the real world and see how these reactions are used and Mother Nature uses them. All right. Let's continue on. Now, I'm turning the switch. Will this be on the test? Off. But something I would like to mention briefly. There's a functional group called a diazo group. And usually you have an aromatic ring attached to two nitrogens, and that has a plus charge on one of the nitrogens, the way it's drawn, one way, and it has an anion, so you have a net zero charge. Again, switches and off. Here's another general reaction I won't talk about and have to learn, but this is called a coupling reaction, a naso coupling reaction. And what it does is, form what's known as an azo compound or a diazonium compound, where you react two molecules together. One of them is the molecule I just showed you, the azo. The other is a phenol compound, and they can be substituted. I won't go through the chemistry, but this is an electrophilic attack on the other ring. And these molecules are called azo dyes. If you look around this room, Anybody who isn't wearing anything that's totally pure white, this isn't, but I am, I'm totally pure white with any joke. Anyways, anything that's not white, clothes-wise, these compounds are what makes that color. They absorb everything but what you see. So if you're wearing a blue top, the azo dye is absorbing everything but the blue light, because light is made up of all colors of the rainbow. I think you learned that hopefully in high school physics or somewhere. And I think you all remember Roy G. Bibb. Red, orange, never mind. But anyway, uh, 
And these azo dyes, I think they were invented, discovered around the end of the 1800s, and maybe even a little earlier by organic chemists. Now, before that time, like long, long ago, like in the Greek Roman times or before that, how did you dye clothes? We extracted certain molecules to take out from molecules that, from plants that would dye the clothes. Well, it turned out that's very expensive. And who could afford that? Who would be having all the money? The king. And one of them, and again, switches off. This comes from the indigo plant called indigo dye. It's also aromatic with nitrogens and it absorbs all but blue. And you know what they called that color blue that it would make the cloth? Royal blue. I wonder who got that name. Who the kings could afford it? Have you ever seen movies or TV, what color is the robe of the king usually? A blue or purple, because that was royal blue. And if you see an ancient, a movie about long ago that you see the peasants are wearing colored stuff, that's not true, because they didn't have money to dye cloth. It was white. All right, switch is still off, but there's an interesting area I want to talk about. I'll probably get into tomorrow, too. Uh, quick caveat, things I'm going to talk about in alkaloids, I am in no way endorsing them, or the college is no way endorsing them, but this is real life. All right, there's a group of nitrogen-containing compounds called the alkaloids. And there's certain segments, they're not functional groups, but they're, they've been given this name. And what are alkaloids? Those are nitrogen-containing compounds extracted from plants. So if you have a plant or a mushroom, you can get things out of it that affects your body, has major physiological effects on your body, like your brain. And let's look at a couple of these. Again, the switch is off. Uh, here's a structure of a molecule. Again, I copied this from the internet. I should find a better one. But now you understand what this is. What are different things? Benzene ring with a hydroxyl group. Another <coughs> alcohol, double bond. This is a complex ring system. Carbon here, carbon there, carbon there. Tertiary mean. Ether. This is called morphine. In World War II, morphine was the main painkiller for anybody injured on soldiers on the battlefield. It would remove, reduce pain for any of the wounded soldiers. And it's an alkaloid. Now, if you look at morphine, morphine and if you change what do you have in alcohol, what can you do with an alcohol? Well, I can make it into an ether. And if you do that, take morphine and react one of the alcohols, this is another way of drawing the same structure, it's an alkaloid nitrogen-containing compound. You have the alcohol become an ether now, and this is called codeine. Codeine is an excellent painkiller. Uh, I took it one summer, I had asthmatic bronchitis, and that was an awful summer. And my father, being a pharmacist, brought home a big bottle of this great cough syrup, which you can't buy anymore, unfortunately. And at that time, it was prescription for a while. It was just over the counter and we signed for it. But well, let's interpret hydrate with coating. And by the end of the summer, beginning of school, I was better. And I was still taking every morning before I went to school a couple of tablespoons of cough medicine. My father said, you know, you're better now. You don't need that. I said, but it makes me feel good. He said, yeah, I bet it will. What's electric turpin hydrate and coating? It's 80 proof alcohol with coating. It's like doing a shot or two of vodka and some coating before you get sure I was feeling good going to school for a nice blood cell. Anyway, now, if you think about coating or better yet morphine and the two hydroxyl groups, what can you do with alcohols? You can make esters. If you do that, you have a product which is a legal drug called heroin. And you hear about them. One of the reasons elixir turpentine hydrate with coating was that other things with coating were made illegal or hard to get because people found a way of converting them into heroin, which you shouldn't do because it's illegal. And this is heroin. And it's also an alkaloid, nitrogen-containing compound from. Now, another alkaloid, small little molecule, not that many carbons, 
This is a methyl group, tertiary amine, ester, ester. This is cocaine. And I think if you followed the movies or TV over the last number of years in the news, at times, I don't know what it is now, but it was a serious health problem because it's an illegal drug that people get addicted to. It gives a high, obviously, I've never taken it. And this is a molecule. And I'll continue tomorrow. For those of you at lab, I'll see you in a couple minutes. For those of you don't, I'll see you tomorrow.